When I found out that I was a Blavatnik Award honoree, I was frankly totally surprised. I did not consider at all that I would be able to win the Blavatnik Award. And so I, I was humbled, I was honored. It was a total surprise to me. For my career, it not only gives recognition to my work, but it also gives re recognition to me as, as an independent researcher. When I heard that I was selected, it's some kind of like confirmation that uh, your research is valuable. My name is Shruti Puri. I'm an assistant professor in the Applied Physics Department at Yale. I'm a theoretical quantum physicist working on the next generation of what someone may call quantum leap in computing technology, known as quantum computers. My research lies at the very heart of quantum computing and quantum information science and blends a unique set of ideas from quantum physics with an expansive set of techniques from computer science. An important topic of my research is to preserve the fragile ecosystem of the quantum world from noise. This noise, also known as quantum error, is very similar to the type of noise we experience in a loud restaurant. If quantum computing technologies are going to reach their full potential, these technologies must take full advantage of key features in the quantum world and must also be resilient against noise. If they're ever going to outperform today's best supercomputers, we must perform error correction. In my most recent work, I discovered a remarkable new way of storing information in quantum computers, a new type of quantum bit. We call this quantum bit a curry cat. It stores quantum information in complex, interacting photons of light. This new type of quantum bit is tailored to be robust against most errors, and the few errors that do remain become relatively easy to correct. In addition, my discovery of the Kerkat quantum bit had also led me to explore new areas where quantum computing can be applied. My name is Zahra Abdullah Najad and I am a postdoctoral research associate in University of Connecticut. I consider myself to be a material scientist and a civil engineer working on what I consider to be an urgent problem in my field, and this is to make concrete greener and more sustainable as a building material. In my research, I developed green construction materials for building with a keen eye on sustainability. I began my career as an architectural conservator, restoring historical old buildings and mosques in Qazvin in Iran. This work has really informed the work I do today, designing new sustainable concrete building materials. Green building materials made from concrete will be pivotal if we are going to make building materials more eco-friendly. In my research, I have been able to show that construction materials made with green concrete are not only eco-friendly, but also enhance the desired engineering properties the construction industry seeks. The specialized concrete and mortar formulas I have developed can actually capture the greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, and significantly reduce the impact of these concretes on global warming. I have also developed a new type of concrete-based foam. It's not toxic and will make newly constructed buildings dramatically more energy efficient. The future is exciting and the work I do will move the construction industry toward a more sustainable path and eco-friendly future. My name is Adrian Pricewellen. I'm a Flatiron Research Fellow at the Flatiron Institute, which is a part of the Simons Foundation in New York City. I'm an astrophysicist, and I enjoy the challenge of trying to unravel some of the biggest mysteries of the known universe, like what is the true nature of dark matter? Dark matter is an unknown form of matter thought to account for more than 80% of the mass of the known universe. And the way I tackle complex questions like these is by developing detailed statistical analysis techniques and advanced computational methods to analyze data from the Gaia satellite. And with this data, I've established precise models that reveal, for the first time, clear evidence of a dark matter substructure in the outskirts of the galaxy. The dark matter may also appear in clumps of very low mass around the outer edges of the Milky Way galaxy. The exciting part is that this discovery has allowed scientists to reliably constrain and more or less define the physical properties of dark matter in our galaxy, which has profound implications not only for our understanding of dark matter, but also its impact throughout the universe. 
I've also developed another set of statistical tools that are helping scientists understand the behavior and previously unexplored characteristics of binary star systems, which are systems of two stars orbiting one another. This work will prove to be important for other areas of astrophysics, for example, in the interpretation of populations of merging black holes. Adrian, he's one of the best programmers in astronomy. In fact, when astronomers talk about programming and software development, that his name always comes up. He's one of the leaders in the biggest open source project in astronomy. What I really like about the science that I do is that it's so grand that it doesn't actually apply to, to daily life in a certain sense. I like that the questions that we're after are really sort of fundamental or underpinning to reality or, or cosmology. 